cyclic hyperventilation is somewhat stressful. It's five minutes a day of stress, much like the study that I just just described. And it involves basically doing this, uh, what I'll do in a moment, uh, for five minutes, which is hyperventilating, which is... <sighs> but not continuously for the five minutes because uh, many people would pass out or feel extremely uncomfortable. It involves inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, very deep, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, and then every 25 or 30 breaths or so doing a full exhale and holding one's breath, lungs empty for about 25, maybe 30, maybe even 60 seconds, and then continuing until five minutes is up. Subjects report and our data indicate that people feel a heightened level of autonomic arousal. In fact, I can feel it right now, even from that very brief uh, cyclic hyperventilation bout I just did. You feel a heating up. You feel a, um, uh, some people will perspire. Some people get wide-eyed. Some people feel agitated. That's adrenaline being released into your system. Now, I'm not suggesting everyone run out and do this. And if you have a predisposition to panic attack or anxiety attacks, please don't do this because it is very stimulating and can trigger those sorts of attacks. But this five-minute-a-day protocol of cyclic hyperventilation does lead to big increases in autonomic arousal. So it, it, it's stressful in air quotes, but to bring us back to the uh, my colleague David Spiegel's um, quote, it really was him that said it, not me. It's not just about the state that you're in. It's about the state that you're in plus how you got there and whether or not you directed entry into that state. And that point of that one directs their own entry into a state deliberately is really key and I think has an important implications for whether or not there's stress relief and fear relief and trauma relief from bringing oneself into a state of increased autonomic arousal. Why? Because of the way that that fear and trauma circuitry is organized. If you recall, it's got these components of how external events can trigger an internal stress response and fear response and trauma response, but there's that top-down prefrontal component that can inhibit certain com aspects of that fear and threat circuitry. Now, earlier we were talking about that prefrontal circuit being engaged through narrative, through self-directed, deliberate narrative. It's the person deliberately retelling the story. Here we're talking about a deliberate reactivation of the sensations in the body. So where I think this is all going, meaning where my laboratory and the Spiegel laboratory and other laboratories out there are taking this, is you can imagine a very brief five minutes a day, two weeks was the time that they did this for five minutes a day for two weeks, intervention in which people with the support of a clinician, we would hope, would deliberately induce a physiological state that's very stressful. Right? Not shying away from the stress response, but increasing their own stress response deliberately and maybe in conjunction with recounting the traumatic or fearful circumstance. 